can you tell what's wrong with this circuit? We basically have a 5 ohm load here, and we're using the bipolar junction transistor as a simple switch. It means that going to the base of this transistor is going to be some kind of signal. Maybe it comes from a microcontroller. So the output of the microcontroller would be a voltage like 0 volts or 5 volts. If the microcontroller inputs 0 volts to the transistor, then the transistor will be in cutoff. Basically, it's turned off and we won't have any current through the load. If the microcontroller gives us a 5 volt signal, then the transistor will turn on and we'll have some current going through the load. Now again, what's the problem? Well, you might notice that the load is only 5 ohms. Now that's going to give us substantial current through the load. That also means that we'll have perhaps substantial current through the base. Can the microcontroller provide the necessary current or not? That's the potential problem with the circuit, and it's something that we would need to be aware of. What we'll later see is that another transistor configuration called the Darlington configuration can help improve the situation a little bit. But first, let's analyze this circuit in a little bit more detail to see the extent of the problem. Let's assume that we have a signal coming from a microcontroller or a microprocessor that's going to give us either 0 volts or 5 volts. If we have 0 volts going to the base of that transistor, the transistor is going to be in cutoff. I know that it's in cutoff because the base emitter junction doesn't have the required 0.7 volts to turn it on. It means in this state the transistor is fully off. If we put 5 volts at the base, the transistor is going to be in saturation, in other words, fully on. There's not going to be any problem with the configuration when the transistor is off. We could only potentially have a problem when the transistor is on. The problem can arise if the microcontroller or source of the current, IB, is insufficient. For any given IB, we're going to have a collector current flowing down through this resistor. Let's find it using Ohm's law. We'll assume a saturation voltage of 0.2 volts. You might have noticed when I worked problems in previous videos and I wanted to see when the transistor would saturate, I would often assume 0.7 volts here but that's because I was trying to make sure that the transistor definitely wasn't saturated. Here, it's a little bit different. I want to assume that the transistor is saturated, so I want the lowest possible voltage that we might see because I want to calculate the highest possible collector current that might flow. This is a worst case scenario. If we look at the data sheet, for example, of a typical NPN bipolar transistor, the 2N2222, we can see that a typical value of the saturation voltage is 0.2 volts. We can now use Ohm's law to find the collector current. It's just V over R. So we have 10 volts at the top, 0.2 volts at the bottom, and 5 ohms. This gives us 1.96 amps. I hope that you can already see that we have a major problem. The maximum current that the transistor is supposed to be able to handle is only 0.6 amps, so we would probably burn out the transistor if we were to use the 2N2222. Of course, we could use a power transistor instead. For example, we could use the TIP31A. That allows 3 amps to flow through the collector. That transistor can also be mounted on a heat sink, so it should be able to handle the current. How about for the base current, though? The base current is just the collector current divided by beta. If we used a beta of 100, I would get 19.6 milliamps, which ought to be okay for most microcontrollers. But you might have noticed that the typical beta for a power transistor is a little bit lower than the typical beta for a signal transistor. And the reason is that there's more current flowing through its collector. If we take sort of the worst case scenario with our bipolar transistor and assume a beta of 10, then we're going to wind up with 196 milliamps going into the base. Now, can a typical microcontroller give us 196 milliamps out of one of its signal pins? I don't know, but not usually. That means we have a problem. We might not be able to turn the transistor on enough to supply the required collector current to drive our load. So what can we do about it? Well, we can turn to the Darlington configuration. In an ordinary bipolar transistor, we have the collector, the base, and the emitter. Now imagine that we add another NPN transistor and kind of wrap it around the first one, and I call the collector the effective collector, I call the base the effective base, and I call the emitter the effective emitter. So two transistors here kind of behave like a single transistor. Let's call the current going into the set 
IC. Let's call the current going into the base over here IB. And we'll call the current coming out of the emitter down here I sub E. The collector current's going to split. Let's call this branch IC1 and let's call this branch IC2. Let's call the emitter current here IE1. And this is also basically the base of transistor two. So let's call it IB2 there. Let's analyze this circuit. Well, from the first transistor, I know that the collector current is beta times IB. We could call it beta one if I call this transistor one. We'll call the beta of this transistor, transistor two. We have a similar equation for transistor two. We now have beta two times IB two. However, since IB two is the same as emitter current one, I can just rewrite this a little bit. I'm now going to rewrite my emitter current one as beta plus one times IB1, which is just IB. Let me add an equation up here to make it really clear what I've just done. Using the Kirchhoff current law at this node, I know that the collector current of the entire set is the sum of IC1 and IC2. And I can now substitute in from what I've just written. So for IC1, we have it there on the top row. And for IC2, we have it over here. Let's multiply this out a little bit. Finally, I want to factor out IB. We can now take note that IB is the base current going into the whole set. IC is the collector current going into the whole set, and I sub E is the emitter current coming out of the whole set. We could then call this beta effective in order to treat the set of two transistors like a single transistor. Since beta one times beta two is probably a much larger number than either beta one or beta two alone, we can approximate our beta effective as beta one times beta two. If the transistors are the same, then it's going to be just beta squared. In other words, the Darlington configuration allows us to take a single transistor that has only beta as its current gain and form a new super transistor that has a gain of beta squared. That's going to help us solve this problem that we encountered when we we're trying to use the transistor as a switch when you need a lot of load current. So let's work this problem again, but we're now going to assume that we have a Darlington configuration. Quite often, these transistors come packaged as a set. So if you just look at a Darlington transistor, it has three terminals and it kind of looks like an ordinary transistor. You can only tell it's a Darlington pair when you look at the data sheet or you notice that the beta is exceptionally high. Let's assume here that we're going to use the TIP120, which is one of these packaged sets. You'll notice that the beta for the Darlington pair is a thousand. Basically everything in the dotted line is packaged together as a single Darlington pair with the TIP120. The transistor also has a few resistors packaged together. If you look at the data sheet, you'll find that there's a resistor here connecting base to emitter and another one here connecting base to emitter. This transistor also has a diode that connects the collector to the emitter. The reason why the diode's there is because a typical application for Darlington transistor is to drive a relay coil. And any time you, you drive coils or inductances, you can end up with voltage spikes when things are switched on and off. So we don't want to burn out transistors by having voltage spikes, which can cause current spikes. Let's take the worst case scenario for the VCE saturation of our TIP120 and assume that it's one volt. Let's again find our collector current. Using Ohm's law, our collector current is going to be about 10 minus one divided by five or 1.8 amperes. Our transistor can handle five amps, so we're okay in terms of the collector current. In terms of the maximum power dissipation, it can dissipate 65 watts, we're fine. We're fine because we only have 1.8 watts here. How about the required base current? Well, in this case, because our beta is effectively a thousand, our signal, our switch, or our microcontroller would only need to provide 1.8 milliamps of current in order to drive the Darlington pair. Problem solved.